tell us from the future. May there be good on earth. From the book by Vladimir Magrer. Who are we? Translated by Miriam Schwartz. A friendly family live on one of the Russians' homesteads. This husband and wife had two children. A boy, Constantine, eight years old, and a girl, Dasha, five. Their father was considered one of Russia's most talented programmers. There were several new model computers in his study where he compiled programs for the military department. Sometimes buried in work, he would sit at his computers in the evenings as well. The members of his family who were used to gathering in the evening would go to his study and there each do something of their own. His wife would sit in an armchair and embroider. His son would read or draw, depicting the landscape of the new settlement. Only five-year-old Dasha could not always find herself something pleasing to do. And then she would sit in an armchair in such a way that she could see all of her family. And she would spend a long time closely examining each one. From time to time, she would close her eyes and then her face express a gamut, emotion, a, a gamut of emotions. On that outwardly ordinary evening, the family sat in the father's study where each was doing his own thing as always. The study door was open, so everyone heard the old cuckoo clock cucking, cuckooing from the children's bedroom next to the father's study. Ordinarily, the cuckoo, the cuckoo only cuckooed during daylight hours, but it was already evening. So the father tore himself away from what he was doing and looked at the door. And the other members of the family looked in surprise at where the sound had just come from. Only little Dasha sat in her chair with her eyes closed and noticed nothing. A barely noticeable but frank smile played on her lips. Suddenly the cuckooing was repeated as if someone were in the children's bedrooms and moving the clock's hands, forcing the mechanized cuckoo to keep cuckooing, heralding the coming of the next hour. Ivan Nikolfich, as the father of the family was called, turned his swivel chair toward his son and said, Kostya, please go try to stop the clock or fix it. Grandfather's gift has served us so many years. This is an odd breakdown, very odd. Go try to sort it out, Kostya. His children always obey. They did so not for fear of punishment because they were never punished. Kosya and Dasha love and respect their parents. For them, it was the highest satisfaction to do something with them or carry out a parental request. Hearing his father's words, Kosya immediately stood up. But to his mother and father's amazement, he did not go to his bedroom. He stood there looking at his younger sister sitting in the chair with, with closed eyes. The cuckooing came from the bedroom as before, but Kosio stood there and looked at his sister without tearing his eyes away. Delena, the mother of the family, looked with concern at her son standing stock still. Suddenly she stood up and shouted in fright, Kosio, Kosio, what's the matter with you? Her eight-year-old son returned to his mother, surprised at her fright, and replied, I'm fine there, Mama, and I would like to carry out Papa's request, but I can't. Why? You can't move a little. You can't go into your own room. I can move, as Poof Kosio waved his arms and snapped his feet. 
but there's no point going to my room. She's here and she's stronger. Who's here and who's stronger? His mother was getting more and more worried. Dasha, Kosya replied, and he pointed at his smiling younger sister, eyes still closed, sitting in the chair. She's the one moving the clock's hands. I tried to put them back where they were, but I can't. When she... What are you saying, Koshta? Kosanka, both you and Dashenka are here in front. In front of us. I can see I can see you, so how can you be here and at the same time be moving the clocks and in the other room? Well, yes, we're here, Kosia replied, but our thoughts is there. Where the clock is. Only her thought is stronger. So it so it cuckoos when her thought speeds up the hands. Lately, she's been playing at this a whole lot. I told her not to do it. I knew you might get worried, but Dasha doesn't care. When she gets to thinking, she starts cooking up something. What is Dasha getting um, to thinking about? Ivan Nikovich joined the conversation. And why haven't you said anything about this to us before, Kosia? You can see for yourself how she gets to thinking. The clock hands are unimportant. She's just entertaining herself this way. I can do it too. Move the clock's hands when no one gets in my way. Only I can't think the way Dasha does. When she's deep in thought, her thoughts can be, can't be stopped. What is Dasha thinking about? Closer, do you know? No, you have to ask her yourself. I'll interrupt her thinking now so she doesn't cook up something else. Kosia walked over to the chair where his younger sister was sitting and said a little more loudly and distinctly than usual. Dasha, stop thinking. If you don't stop, I won't talk to you for a whole day in any way. You frighten Mama. The little girl's eyelash fluttered. She ran and a praising look over those present in the study. And as if waking up, jump off the chair, apologized and mowed her eyes. The cuckooing stopped and for a while there was total silence in the study. A silence broken by little Dasha's quiet, apologetic voice. She raised her little head, looked at her mama and father with kind shining eyes and said, Dear Mama, dear Papa, I'm sorry if I frighten you, but I have to. I really, really have to think it up, thought through. Now I, now I cannot think it through, and tomorrow I will, I will after I rest. The little girl's lips were trembling, and she seemed just about to cry, but she went on. Kosa, you aren't going to talk to me, but I'm still going to be thinking until I finish. Come to me, dear, da dear daughter, Ivan Nukovic said, trying to restrain himself. And he held out his hands to his daughter, opening them for a hug. Dasha ran to her father. She jumped into his lap and wrapped her little arms around her, her father's neck, pressed up to his cheek briefly, and then slipped off his lap and stood next to him, leaning her head toward him. For some reason, Ivan Nakovich had a hard time hiding his emotion, and he started speaking to his daughter. Don't be upset, Dasha, Dash, Dashenka. Mama isn't afraid when you think anymore. Just tell us what you're thinking about. What is, your, what is it you absolutely must finish thinking, and why do the clock hands move so quickly when you're thinking? Dear Papa, I want to make everything nice, big in time and everything not nice, small and noticeable. Or basically, that's what I want to finish thinking, so that the clock hands jump over what's not nice and it doesn't happen. But after all, everything that is and isn't nice doesn't depend on the clock hands. The snaka. 
Not on the hands there, Papa. I understand it's not the hands, but I move them at the same time. So I feel the time. The cocoon marks off the speed of my thought because I need to finish in time. And so I move the clock's hands. How do you do that, Dushenka? It's simple. I imagine the clock's hand with the edge of my thoughts, of my thought. And then I think they should move faster. And they do move faster when I start thinking fast. What do you want to achieve by, by moving time, dear daughter? What don't you like about what is? I do like what is. I understand a long time ago that it's not time fault. It's people themselves who spoil their own time. You, dear Papa, often sit by your computer and then you go away for a long time. You, dear Papa, are spoiling time when you leave. Me, spoiling it? In what way? A good time is when we're, thought we're together. When we're together, there are very good minutes and hours and even days. Then everything around us rejoices. Remember, dear Papa, when the apple tree was only just starting to blossom a little. You and Mama saw the first little flowers and you took Mama's hands and spun her. And Mama laughed like a bell so that everything around her rejoiced, the leaves and birds. And I wasn't hurt at all because you took Mama in your hands and not me and spun her because I love our Mama very much. I rejoiced at the time along with everyone. But then another time came. Now I understand that it's you, dear Papa, who made it different. You left us for a very long time. Little apples had started appearing on the tree. Even you still weren't here. Mama would walk up to the apple tree and stand there alone. But no one spun her and she didn't laugh like a bell. And there was nothing for everyone around to rejoice in. Mama had, has a completely different smile when you're gone. A sad smile. And that's a bad time. Dasha spoke quickly and emotionally. All of a sudden she fell silent and then she blurted out. You shouldn't make it worse when it's good t time, Papa dear. Dasha, in a way you're right, of course, but you still don't know everything about the time in which we are. The time we live in, Ivan Nikolovich said in a confused way. He was upset. Somehow he needed to explain the necessity of his trips, explain it comprehensively for his little daughter. And finding nothing better, he began telling her about his work, showing the missile plans and models of his computer. You have to understand, Dashenka, it's nice for us here, of course, and it's nice for those who live near us, too. But there are other places, other countries in the world, and there are all kinds of different weapons there. In order to protect our beautiful orchard and the orchards and homes of your friends and papas, the papas go away sometimes. A country has to have lots of modern weapons too to defend itself. And recently, Dashenka, you understand recently in another country, not ours, they come up with a new weapon. Right now, it's stronger than ours. Look here at the screen, Dushenka. Ivan Nikolovich pressed the key and the picture of an user-shaped missile appeared on the screen. This is a big missile, and it has 56 small missiles on it. Oh. The big missile um, flies up at someone's command and heads for the indicated point in order to destroy everything living at that point. This missile is also very hard to knock down. If any object gets close to it, its onboard computers start working and one of the small missiles separates from the who and destroys the object. The little rocket speed is greater than the big one since it uses at the start the, iner the inertia of the big one 
in order to knock down just one such monster, you have to send 57 missiles against it. In the country that manufactured this so-called cassette missile, there are still only three prototypes so far. They're carefully hidden in different places and mines deep underground, but on a command transmitted by radio waves. They can store up. A small group of terrorists is already blackmailing several countries, threatening them with major devastations. I'm supposed to figure out the program of the cassette missile onboard computer. Dashenka. Ivan Nikovich stood up and started pants pacing around the room. He continued speaking quickly, plunging more and more into his thoughts about the program, as if forgetting about his daughter standing by the computer. Ivan Nikovich walked around, walked over quickly to the monitor where the external view of the missile was depicted, and clicked the keyboard. And on the screen appeared the scheme for the missile complex fuel line and the seam of the locator installation, and then the overall view again. As he changed the image, image, Ivan Nikolovich was no longer paying attention to his little girl. He was reasoning out loud. They've obviously equipped each segment of the location device. Yes, of course, each one. But the program can't be dif different. The program is identical. Suddenly, the computer next to that one sounded an alarm, demanded immediate attention. Ivan Nikolovich turned toward the monitor of the computer standing next to him and fell still. A text message was flashing on the monitor over and over with the following content, alarm X, alarm X. Ivan Nikolovich quickly clicked the keyboard and on screen appeared the image of a man in military uniform. What happened, Ivan Novakish asked him. Three unusual explosions have been registered, the man replied. The command has been given to put the entire defense complex on level one readiness. Less powerful explosions are continuing. There's been an earthquake in Africa. No one is issuing any ex explanation whatsoever. According to information exchange data, all the planet's military blocks have been moved to level one readiness. The attacking side has not been determined. The explosions are continuing and we are attempting to clarify the situation. All employees of our department have been ordered to proceed to an analysis of the situation. The man on the monitor spoke quickly and with military precision. And at the end, he added, no longer cool, coolly, but with a certain concern. The explosion are continuing, Ivan Nikolovich. The explosion are continuing. I'm signing off. The image of the man in uniform disappeared from the monitor screen. And Ivan Nikolovich continued to look at the extinguished screen and think tensely. Slowly pondering, he turned toward his chair, where little Joshua was still standing, and he shivered at his own incredible conjecture. Here was this, his little girl, squinting, not blinking, looking at the monitor with the depiction of the modern missile. Suddenly, her little body shuddered. Dasha heaved a relief sigh. She pushed, enter, and when the depiction of a new missile appeared, she once again squinted and began looking hard at it. Ivan Nikolovich stood there as if paralyzed, unable to move from his spot, and feverishly kept asking himself the same question. She isn't really exploding them, is she? Exploding them with her thought because she doesn't like them. She's exploding them, really? How? He wanted to stop his daughter and call to her, but he was unable to say the words loudly. He could only whisper, Dasha Dashneska, my little girl, stop. Observing his whole scene, Kosia suddenly stood up quickly, ran up to his little sister, gave her a light slap on her bottom and said, Dasha, this wave you scared Papa now too, and now I'm not going to talk to you for two days, one day for Mama and the other for Papa. 
do you hear? Do you hear? I'm telling you, you're scaring Papa. Slowly emerging from her concentration, Dasha turned toward her brother and now, not squinting, but imploring and, apologic and apologetically looked him in the eyes. Kostya saw Dasha's tear-filled eyes. He put his hand on her little shoulder and said, less sternly than before, all right, I got a work up with what I said, but now you're going to be trying your own ribbons. But now you're going to be tying your own ribbons in the morning. You're not a little girl. And with the words, just don't think about crying, he gently hugged Dasha. The girl pressed her little face into Kosa's chest. Her little shoulders started shaking and she kept repeating bitterly, I frightened someone again. I'm unbearable. I wanted to do what was best and I frightened him. Kalina went over to her children, squatted and stroked Dasha, Dasha's head. The little girl immediately threw herself on her mother's neck and started crying softly. How does she do this, Kosia? How? Ivan Nikolovich asked his son after he came around. The same way as with the hands on the clock, Papa, Kosia replied. But the clock is right nearby and the missus are far away and their location is held in strictest secret. Papa Dasha doesn't care where they are. She just has to see the object's external shape. But the explosions, in order to explode them, you have you have to close the contacts and not just one. There's security after all codes. Papa, Dasha connects all the contacts until there is a short. A short. It used to be it took her a very long time, 15 minutes or so. But lately, it's been about a minute and a half. Used to be. Yes, Papa, only not with missiles. We used to play like that. When she started moving the clock hands, I showed her the old electric cart I liked to ride in when I was little. Papa, I opened the hood and asked her to connect the wires to the lights because it was hard for me to get to them myself. And she did. And when she asked to go for a ride, I said she was li still little and couldn't. How you have to turn it on and break. And then I agreed because she insisted. I explained how you were supposed to turn it on. But Dasha, it all did it all her own way. Papa Dasha got in, took the will and started off without turning anything on. She thought she had. But I saw and she didn't do anything with her hands or rather she turned it on, but she did it mentally. And also Papa, she's friends with microbes. They obey her. Microbes, what kind of microbes? The kind there are so many of that live everywhere around us and in us. You can't see them, but they're, they're there. Remember Papa at the edge of our homestead in the forest, the meadow supports from the old high voltage electric lines picking up or out of the ground. Yes, and so they were rusty. And on a concrete base, when Dasha went mushroom picking, she saw these remains and said how bad it was that they kept the berries and mushrooms from growing. Then she said, you have to eat them up quickly, very quickly. And what happened? Two days later, these rusty remains in the concrete base were gone. Just bare earth, no grass at the time. The microbes ate up the metal and concrete. But why? Why didn't you tell me before about all this was happening with Dasha Kostya? I was afraid, Papa, of what? I've read in history, in the recent past, they tried to isolate people with unusual abilities. I wanted to tell you and Mama everything but I couldn't find the words to make you understand and believe. Kosia, we always believe you, and not only that, but you could have demonstrated to us, or rather you could have asked Sasha to demonstrate her abilities for us on something harmless. That's not what I was afraid of, Papa. She might have demonstrated. Kosia fell silent, 
and when he began to speak, his voice was agitated. Papa, I love you and Mama. Sometimes I am strict with the Shanka, but I love her very much too. She's good. Dasha is good to everything around her. She wouldn't harm a bug, nor they, they her. She went up to a beehive, sat down right by the hive entrance and watched them fly. The bees, lots of bees crawl over her arms, legs, and cheeks, but they didn't sting. The Shenka held out her palm to the bees and they would land on it and leave something behind. Then she would lick her palm and laugh. She's good, Papa. Calm down. Kosa, don't get upset. Let's assess the situation calmly. Yes, we need to think it all through calmly. Dasha is still a child. She blew up several modern missile complexes. She could have started a world war, a terrible war, but even without a war. If she looked through pictures of our missiles and not just our enemies, if it's, if it's all the missiles and all countries started blowing up, the world could find itself on the brink of total disaster. Hundreds of millions of lives could be lost. I love, our little, I love our little Dasha too, but millions, we have to consult. We have to find a solution. But for now, I don't know. The Shenka has to be isolated somehow. Somehow, yes, she might have to be put into a hypnotic sleep for a while. She might. But what is the solution? What other solution can be found? Papa, Papa, wait. Maybe we could remove all the lethal missiles, which she doesn't like from, from the earth. Remove them, but that would require consent by all countries, all military blocks, yes. But that can't be achieved quickly, if at all, and for now. Ivan Nikolovich quickly walked over to the computer, which showed the missile they had kept Dasha from destroying. He turned off the monitor, moved over to the communications computer keyboard, and started transmitting texts to headquarters. This message must be dis disseminated immediately to all military blocks and international media. The reason for the series of explosion of missiles, missile complex are bacteria capable of closing the contacts. They are controllable. All pictures of armament capable of exploding must be destroyed all from the smaller bullet to the most modern missile complex. The person who controls the bacteria does not need to know the location of the explosive site. All he needs is to see its shape in a picture. Ivan Nikolovich looked at a now smiling Dasha, Dasha, chatting animatedly with her mama and added the following text to this message. The location of the installation controlling the explosion is unknown.